everybody, welcome to Sonic Talk episode uh, 631, which is recording live today on Wednesday, the 19th of August, uh, 2020 of your Earth years. Uh, and Earth is a strange place, but we're hopefully getting you through all the all your various quarantines and uh, isolations and all that other kind of stuff. I know it's very uh, it's very summer at the moment, so it's been a lot hot. We're getting a little bit better weather here. Uh, but anyway, this isn't really about social commentary. This is a com this is a podcast to do with music technology so we talk about stuff that is software hardware studios all kinds of music creation various other things there are so many uh things that surround the creation and performance and distribution of music that we fairly rarely have not have stuff to talk about although summer can be a bit light but we've got some really exciting stuff to try this week you may remember last week i discussed uh, the idea of uh, maybe bringing in an audience via zoom and seeing how that worked well i can tell you we have one. Ta-da! Ladies and gentlemen, I uh, introduce you the, the the Zoom audience. Now, the Zoom audience, I can do a picture in picture without covering anybody up. Uh, we've got uh, Wagyu, we've got Suzanne, we've got uh, uh, Thomas, we've got Israel, we've got John, we've got Timothy, we've got Steve uh and iphone don't know what his name is <laughs> but <laughs> there he is yeah he's giving us a thumbs up so yeah the idea is they're going to be brought in a little bit closer um just we thought we'd try it to see if it could be done and they're watching what you're watching if you're watching it elsewhere so thank you very much to them for being game what we may do is uh if we introduce something like a patreon or a youtube membership thing which we're considering which isn't going to in fact affect our regular content just be maybe add some extra things this might be one of those things we try or we might just do it we're not sure but i think they should all wave enthusiastically and we can kind of uh, we can thank them deeply for their uh, for their <laughs> early adoption and uh, yeah thank you very much that's very good it's good, good to see some hair there as well i must say it's, it's not something that i usually uh, usually see a lot of um, anyway let's um also introduce our guests i feel now i've really got to start with gaz because otherwise that's going to be bad uh gaz williams <laughs> is here from Hello. bristol uh, who yes. is a very uh, her suits gentleman um and hairy and a burst a bass player producer mm -hmm. music technologist uh and you have you got your podcast tonight as well you're doing your own show yeah we've got my show 8 p.m uk time tonight and uh, quite a special one tonight because i'm going to have a guest in my studio and oh my. uh yes and that guest will be mr finley shakespeare i'm going to get a modular master class <laughs> So oh, he's going to come wow. and help me. And uh, yeah, so I'm really excited about that because I've got all this new stuff that I'm really sort of bamboozled with. And, uh, you know, having having such a wonderful... Uh, Finley is amazing. His he music is. is fantastic, as well as him being a, you know, a brilliant module manufacturer with his future sound, future sound systems. Yep. Yes. I that would agree that with that. No, he's a great guy. He's great. And when, I remember because yeah. I saw him perform at... Uh, the Bristol show, I can't remember what that's called. Uh, uh, it was a couple of years ago, so you haven't had it this year. And he was just amazing. I mean, he, he seems mm. like such a mild mannered and, and sort of look, <laughs> doesn't look like the sort of music and performer he's going to be when you see him for the first oh, time. Yeah. And I'm going to leave it there because I think, you know, if he does any live streams, you should definitely make an effort to go and see what he does because it's really like, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't realize yeah. that. But anyway, lovely to have you, Gaz. <laughs> uh, oh, incidentally, um, we did the MC707 review, which is a remote thing, which was pretty cool. Yes. Seems yes. to have actually gone down very well that as a sort of uh, a, as a format so we may well do that so we're Great. breaking we're breaking formats everywhere <laughs> chat is what do you think do you think the mc707 yeah. review is a good format okay so two out of five <laughs> ain't bad okay i uh, oh no they were just it must be the latency i'm sure they all in agreement um so uh yes well anyway lovely to have you guys uh, so yeah do check mm. that out uh, and also i should say do check out the uh the personas thing as well uh that we did last night persona studio 5 one absolutely awesome um loads of great features and we did a live stream it's a bit disappointing with the numbers who turned up for the live stream but people are watching it now i just want to get loads of people to see it because it's there's some really cool features in studio one version five anyway mm. let's also now go over to mr matt hodson now matt i'm there's something different it's higher resolution. There's something changed. Have you changed cameras or something? You, you seem no, less pixely and more, more something um, else. I've, I've got the Ethernet going. Ah. I've, I've been sneaky the past few long? shows. I've been, I've been a bit sneaky because you, you say don't do it over wireless, and I've been doing it over wireless. But now I'm on the Ethernet land, and I've got 
my I literally look outside the studio window and I can see the box in the road where my internet comes from. In fact, the internet strength was that powerful coming into my house. They had to put a 10 dB pad on the internet coming into my because <laughs> it was what is that it was square to, waving you, or I'm something. So, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, sir. Wave. You're getting too much data. You can't have this much. Yeah. It's not good for you. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. I didn't know he could do that. I didn't. So anyway, yeah. So. Um, here I am in slightly better high res. Sorry about How that. How bizarre! Folks. The, the twisted. So you're attenuated yet higher quality at the same time. Isn't that peculiar? I'm gonna just. I feel like I'm Is a that bit dark. Nearly a name for a sh for the show there. Um, yeah, I I've been pretty. Uh, yeah, I've been pretty busy past few days. I've just finished off a track for. Um, actually, you did an interview with Ian Body, um, yeah. who has the great Din label, and he he's kindly asked me to submit a track for. Oh, nice. Um, one of his compilations that he puts out under Tone, Tone Science. So um, I've just submitted that to him and he really likes it. So uh, that, that's that's going to be going out on, not the next one, which comes out in September, um, but I think it, it'll probably come out in October or something like that. If, you, if you're not familiar, folks, with um, Ian's label, go check it out. Some great electronic music on there from all sorts of people like mm. finley might have been on there i'm not i'm not sure but um hey, there's certainly a few what? names that i know on there from the from the modular crew and maybe maybe gaz will be on there one day now well, he's going well, he's i'm gone gonna be on blast. that same i'm going on that same i'll be on that same one as you <laughs> oh really <laughs> so i gotta Look i'm gonna that. have to up my game i'm gonna have to up my there game you <laughs> have you submitted a demo yet gaz have you or was it just an invite only thing Oh. Well, uh, okay, but I don't, I don't I think, want to. Uh, well, I got asked. I, 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 I don't okay. know about Gaz. I yeah. So if I then, if I got in touch with Ian and said, "Can I?" No, I I haven't got time to make. But yeah, Din Records, well worth <laughs> checking out. They do some really good stuff, and yeah. they're really kind of yeah. up in their game. And 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 Ian uh, Ian Body and uh, Nigel Mullaney, I think, is quite closely involved. Well, great great musicians and great stuff. Yeah. Okay. It's great uh, great oh, back catalogue there. If people looking for some music, just go check out their band camp and it's a great back, back catalogue of music in there just to get your head round. And um, uh, yeah, uh, the, oh, the other thing is, yeah, and I've also just submitted a track to label that I'm on Fat Cat Records here as well for, it's quite a heavy, dark brooding techno track that I played at the virtual super booth this year as well. So I finally finished recording that and got that down. So that's what I've been up to. Music. Oh, nice. Plenty of busy, plenty of busy. Well, the, the weather, well, actually, the weather has been, I've, I've said it before, it's probably the worst. A catalogue of music in there, just to get your head round. And, um, Oops, sorry, uh, I just yeah. unmuted something, which is, I should, I didn't mean to do, I'm going to mute that, sorry. Um, I, that's totally thrown me. I'll just pretend like I didn't start that sentence and we'll go again. I'm just doing <laughs> Yeah, there we go. Everybody's holding their heads in their hands in the hands in the, in the YouTube, in the, the Zoom audience. I'm so sorry. I mean, I, this is one thing that I found is like, add it, as I incrementally add more stuff. Oh, we just had a new guy come in. Is that Matt? Or it's not? not yeah, so we've, we're up to a full nine. Excellent. Hey. That's good. So we've got a symmetrical <laughs> collection. Thank you very much. Uh, as I add more stuff, I realise that actually I don't have quite the capacity to manage it and produce the show at the same time. Something's got to give. So hopefully it won't be anything too important. Uh, like I could spend the entire show muted or something and wouldn't realise it. Uh, yeah, again, summer, uh, kind of slow, not an awful lot of stuff. But uh, what we did get today was uh, the new Volca sample. It hasn't got that sticker on it. That was actually me for, for sort of uh, <laughs> clickbait purposes. I put a great big new side. So this is the new Volca sample. Maybe not that thrilling to a lot of you, but me and Gaz mm. reviewed the original one. And the one thing that you can say, it's a very, it's a very basic sample. It's like 150 quid, but yeah. it sounded really, really good. Oh, I mean, the definitely. low end and the bass and all of that stuff is really awesome. I mean, it's well worth yeah. checking out. And they've just announced version two or and this is clever because i didn't know this i just got an email from korg this is going to be you know, the, the original is no longer in production this is now the new version it's got twice the memory so uh what's it? A, a, a massive <laughs> eight seconds at 32k eight, meg. eight megs sorry eight megs right okay <laughs> which could be i don't know what well, eight megs at 32 kilohertz is is considerable amount of stuff uh, so that's kind of cool. Oh, I would like to say uh, thank you very much to uh, Inky in the chat room for a super sticker. That's very cool. Hey, Inky. Yeah, um, but this is so. This is bit, uh, it's going to be a little bit more expensive, or at least the the, the original Volker had dropped off to about 130, 140 quid. This is up up again to 160, something like that. I don't know how. It, I, I must admit, when I was looking to buy something to do live uh, to my live stuff, I was very tempted with the idea of a Volker sample or a circuit 
but then I decided to go with the circuit in the end because the circuit just had a bit more it was just a bit easier to operate in the field and, and song wise and stuff uh, I'll come to you guys first because I mean this is this mm. is right up your street I mean I don't know if you've got you haven't got yeah. all the Volkers have you but uh, you've got this one no well you've got the yes version. yes yeah and I, it was my one that I brought in for the review uh, all those years back and uh, it's interesting to see this um uh, that they've actually kept the bits that are good about the original <laughs> and have fixed, you know, the things that weren't so good. So I think it's a, it's a smart, it's a smart move. Cause as you say, it does sound really good. It's a very characterful sounding sampler. No sample player. Uh, sadly still doesn't sample, which I think may bother a few people, but I mean, the USB port on there will really make that sort of sample process a lot less torturous. Oh, I mean, what did we have to do it before? Was it, ages. yeah, was it like over you audio, audio or mid or into sound? the sync? Yeah, oh, audio right. into the audio sync in, and then you'd have to play it in and like a, you know, like a small little sample could take, you know, a couple of minutes. Um, so <laughs> to change the whole memory would you know, take like about 45 minutes, 50 minutes or whatever. And, um, so I think this makes sense. I think you can still do that if you wish. Um, Personally, I'd much good. prefer it like that, wouldn't you? <laughs> well, there's also a few other things which is really good. I mean, um, it was so frustrating to use with MIDI before. I mean, you know, that's where RetroKit made their really useful, um, clever MIDI cable could uh, mean that you could oh, that's play right. all a note of per, uh, A sample per mm, note? Or... Yes, yeah. yeah. So now I think, you know, I think the polyphony's up on this as well. So it seems like there's a bunch of improvements. One thing I can't see any improvement on, though, is um, the really irritating way of doing anything melodic on it, which is so difficult. And there is almost a, a um, parameter locking kind of affair with it as well. Again, oh, yeah, 11 super, parameters, super, no? Right, so and it's super awkward to do. So I'd, I'd be three. interested to see if 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 that workflow has improved. I, I didn't see anything to suggest that in the in the list, but um, but definitely definitely a, a cool move from Korg, and uh, you know to, re <laughs> to recognise. So a great a great one in the chat room captures that true yeah. vintage retro frustration of the golden age. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. If that wasn't so yeah. long, that would be the show title. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, vintage retro frustration. frustration. Yeah. Retro frustration. That might actually have to be that the title. Could retro frustration. That could yeah. work. Yeah, simulated retro frustration. Um, so. So very cool that they've done this. Uh, it does seem a slightly bit pricey though. Still, I think considering um you know that it doesn't well, that sample. ram you know that ram is really <laughs> you know these days sample <laughs> yeah. ram is you know as we've discovered from roland it's exceptionally hard to get <laughs> on the international point. market yeah not yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. i know i know what you mean though gaz i mean like for an extra 100 quid um i've just gone and bought the electron um model cycles um uh, sampler samples even which is uh, i don't know if you guys might have seen this but electron bought out the two two boxes that are quite cheap now and uh, one of them's um one's like an fm drum synth and the other one is uh, samples for loading samples i don't have a, an outboard sampler last one i had was a, an akai s950 i think and um i kind of figured that i'd like to play around with this a little bit more um and for an extra hundred quid, you can get one of these Electron ones. They're, they're not as comprehensive as the Octatrax, which we've talked about before on the show, how there is a le big learning curve for those machines, certainly. This one, I think, is a little bit more f straightforward, a bit more user-friendly. It, it's only got a stereo output. It does have MIDI in, I believe, on Mini TRS. Um, but it, it seems like a really cool thing. It's got filtering. It's got parameter locks. Um, so, and I think I think you can do these kind of parameter locks on this Volker as well. Um, but that's what I've gone for. I've just gone for one of those recently. I thought for the price, they're about two hundred and sixty quid for the Electron one. What's this Volker one? This one's what one hundred and fifty. Sixty, hundred fifty. Hundred sixty. Yeah. So, like hundred quid more. You know, with the Electron, you get slightly bigger form factor. Um, I think a few more tracks, um, you know, that kind of, uh, and effects. I don't know if this one's got, if the Volker's got effects in it, but it's got really nice reverb and a delay 
yes. built into the Electron one. I, I, and the, the, I mean, the, the parameter locking stuff, because I had just reviewed the cycles, and I have to say, mm. you know, it, it, sounds, it sounds pretty tasty, actually. It's kind of fun. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so that's a good point. So what, what what's the cycles? Two four nine or two? Yeah, about two six nine RRP. Um, that's a tough call, actually. You isn't know, it? yeah. It's yeah. It's I think it's priced really well, actually, and I think it's one of those things like people maybe a little bit. You know, the, the, I suppose there's a Digitact, which is which was like the, the the cheaper Electron, but now these are like the super cheaper ones. Um, so there's there's an an inward route if you like. It's like getting into modular for the first time. Now you can get a bunch of software and play around with that before you commit mm. to spending three hundred pound per module or whatever. But uh, just one thing about the Volca though is I'm really happy to see that you know they're pushing this sort of form factor, these little boxes still, and for what they're producing, they're pretty juicy sounds. Like you say, some of the bass that comes out of these and. Yeah. Um, I was thinking about buying, I used to have a few of them, and uh, going down to Brighton Beach in the evening when it's been really hot recently, there's people playing guitars, um, you know, they've got drums out, and it's really cool, and um, and there's people DJing even down there on the seafront with just a speaker and, you know, and Are you going to be that guy? Are you going to be that guy? I was like? thinking, I, would, I, could, I thought, you know what, I might just get some of these Volkers, load them up with batteries, take, I've got a... a um, quite a decent speaker I can take down there and just jam, do some techno at like two in the morning on Brighton beach in the summer in, and um, yeah, might even make some money. I don't know. Yeah. Busking. You could busk it. Yeah. Well, that's a not a bad <laughs> idea. Uh, I'm going to now, I'm going to actually, I'm going to introduce the audience here. How many of you people have got a Volker? Have any of you own a Volker out there? No, oh, that's interesting. Oh, uh, no, but what, uh, one person, Israel owns a Volker. Two. Two, two, two people playing the Volker. That's really interesting because I mean the the Volker ecosystem is actually you know th there's it's created quite a big thing, hasn't it? You know people are always posting mm. Volker jams and Volker cases and Volker mounting stuff, and it's sort of it works as a thing. Yeah. It seems to have caught the imagination more than perhaps pocket operators or whatever. You know even though a sim sim you know similarly priced, it's it's an interesting kind of it's just Korga well, seems to have got that right. Do you think it's just the, yeah the Japanese I are so good at uh, making things that you want you know like I, I thought people. that well it's interesting yeah it's interesting you're saying this because I thought that the Volker range was going down the toilet with the absolutely dreadful <laughs> Volker mix. mix you know <laughs> which is a which is a which is a which is an abomination uh really so truly truly people at Korg are still product. saying no no but you just don't understand it's like no 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 <laughs> no, no and we won't I won't get off uh, but yes uh but they made an amazing comeback after that because, you know, um, I guess that was the one Tats had left the company or left, certainly left the development um, of the Volkers at that, before the Volker mix. And that was thinking, oh no, you know, he's left and now they've gone and killed the range, you know, with that awful, awful piece of poo. Um, but, you know, they, they made that, then they did the Volker modular, didn't they? And the Volker uh, yeah. drum both of which are, you know, arguably the best Volkers. Um, but the sample was, uh, the sample was the one that could have maybe had the title of the best yeah. ever Volker. So now this new one, it, I, ooh, yeah, that, uh, that versus the modular, I think, um, Volker modular, for the best okay yeah. interesting yeah i mean yeah. yeah the chat room split i mean certainly if you're watching the twitch one come on this is just a toy and you know the, yeah i mean agreed it's not the sort of thing if you're if you're writing kind of uh, deadline cues for feature films <laughs> or ads <laughs> probably not going to be reaching for the volca very often yeah i mean i may yeah. be wrong i mean i don't want to diss it but you know it's not that's not what it's for but uh just it's cool that they've actually kind of uh, brought this out so uh, yeah good and uh interesting though that uh our, our our Zoom audience, not a non Volker owners. That's quite interesting. Or, or, or a percentage of them. Quite interesting. Right, okay. Um, so uh, let's. Uh, oh, I actually wanted to plug our um, Moog. Uh, if it's the right button. Moog QA. Yeah, I shot this on. Uh, when was it? Gosh, it was on Thursday last week, was it? I, d I don't even remember when it was. That's terrible. Oh, I was Friday. It was uh, no, I can't even remember. Uh, but it was because uh, it was it went past in a, f uh, in a flash. But uh, I did the review for the Moog Matron. We had this really good Q and A with uh, Amos there, who 
check his beard out. He's 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 basically going for you guys there. And uh, uh, Mark oh. Riley, and we we did some live patching, but we found some really interesting facts and figures. I mean, Amos was telling me about the sort of stuff that you can do with control law in firmware, which you know may sound really nerdy, but the idea, you know, as as I often say, some synths, you know, when they're not very well. They haven't had a lot of love in the design, or maybe it's been overlooked, you know, and you get that thing when uh, too much, uh, a little bit is too much on a control. You need a, you need some sort of uh, um, logarithmic or exponential control law for things. And he was saying there are things that you can do in firmware that would have, you so you can draw kind of almost like really squiggly curves. So, or if like, for instance, you put oscillator sync on, then the pitch range of the, of the VCO, the control law would change to that to be a wider range because you want... You want that particular, and it was just, there's l lots of tasty little bits of info in that. So I thoroughly recommend you what you check that out. In fact, it was uh, let me see what it was. It was the, the URL I put in there. Uh, Bitly slash Sonic MQA uh, might make it easier to get to. But if you just go to our YouTube channel, it's there, and it was a video that we shot. So it was it ended up being about an hour, and I thought it was only going to be about 20 minutes. But uh, fascinating stuff. So do check that out. Um, right, what is next? Uh, I need to go to my notes. How's our audience doing? Everybody all right there? <laughs> Some of them are actually looking at the screen. <laughs> Excellent. Well, lovely to... Uh, once again, thanks for joining us there. Right. Um, yeah. Vog sample. So, yeah, um, I'm going to go for this because this is fascinating. So, I, I don't know. I'm not familiar with this drum machine. This is the, six two, the 727. And a chap called Harry Axton has, who's used... He's basically been making uh, ROM upgrades for various drum machines has done one for the 727-707 and you could load an additional eight banks of sounds which were like Lindrum, 707, 808, uh, I'm trying to think what he did, I've got the, I've got the, uh, the stuff here haven't I? DMX. DMX, uh, LM1, so basically you get access to all of those things and I thought wow isn't that cool I mean that's just such a nifty idea it's like 50 quid or something and I thought that sounds really good and, the, and I, I didn't know the 727 is actually in terms of drum machines interfaces it was quite advanced for the time wasn't it because it was following on for the 909 and was it following yes it was I think even though it, the, it was an earlier number um, mm. but then I checked and uh, what you actually have to do <laughs> it's, it's really <laughs> terrifying. I'll show you. So basically, <laughs> you do it, yeah, it's like, it's this. Oh, no. Desoldering oh, chips. No. Uh, oh, and, and, and this is, you know, this is, this oh, is boy. terrifying. But 60 yeah. quid. Mm -hmm. but, but then the price of a 707 is 600 plus. I couldn't find any 67s on eBay, so I think they might be a bit rarer. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Has anyone got any? Yeah. Uh, Gaz, was it you? Was it a 626 mm. that you had a a a a, a, a a, a burning, a burning no, affair it's, uh, with it. it's six six oh six. Oh, the six oh six. Um, yeah, well, you can always buy the, the, you can buy the, yeah. the Behringer now, can't you? I know, and in a number of colours, like a whole in a rainbow range of colours. The uh, seven oh seven, the seven two seven was like the percussion version of the seven oh seven, wasn't it? So it was exactly the same, but just had um, just percussion sounds in them. I think um, so. Um, hence, I think it's a lot rarer, but. Um, yeah, it's quite nice to say. I've always quite liked the 727, though. Uh, sorry, the 707, um, the layout of it. I mean, when I was first starting, um, you could, like, it seemed like five, 505s were the ones that were really super cheap at the time. Um, and as I say, I bought a 606. Um, but yeah, you because you've got like uh, you've got all the little faders on there. You've got a, quite well. God, there was a few other things, wasn't there? Because the, the song arranging on there was quite cool as well. Um, so I'm guessing with the firmware, does that change any of the sequencing? I don't power? think so. It's just I think it's no, just, just the random stuff. I mean, it's it's. Yeah. I mean, this is very niche. I mean, let's let's not be out. <laughs> yeah. I just I, th I I said I said someone was slow, but yeah. you know, but but, <laughs> but I mean, is it? I mean. You know, but the TR8S, I mean, I wonder how different they sound. Because obviously the TR8S is probably about, what's that now, about 500 and something. Yeah, that's true. Um, you know, and with all the is, new features that we saw last week. Yeah. Is, yeah, so is the TR, you know, I don't know if, if I mean, if you've got one of these knocking around and, and you feel brave enough to, to take the plunge, then I, I, I would say it's a bit of a no-brainer. But, um, but the... 
the TRAS though, I mean, I'd be really interested to hear them side by side playing sort of say 707 sounds or whatever, um, being as it was an entirely digital machine. Or was it entirely digital? Hmm. Uh, yeah, Maybe. I think I think it possibly yeah. was. I don't know, uh, Matt. I heard you groan when you saw that. <laughs> were you just were you just re just another str another couple of a it couple was of my clips camera on the, on the rack did... in the basement there was it? <laughs> <Are you okay? laughs> yeah. I just realised this camera was kind of like sticking out the side of my head on the on the photo, so I just thought I'd, I'd bend it down, but it went right. So sorry about that. No, there isn't anyone in the dungeon today, so um, we're all right on that front. Um, how did you know about that, Nick? Anyway, um, so drum machines. I uh, oh, I was about to say I don't own a drum machine. <laughs> I've got the DFAM, <laughs> and I've got the Pulsar Twenty Three, which is sat underneath the DFAM again. Whoops. Um, uh, but that's only because I use them both in combination quite a lot. Um, I used to own an eight hundred eight many years ago i even modded that myself and i put midi on it which which meant i had to drill a hole in the side and i got a retro kit and that was actually really easy to do i um, never owned a 707 or anything else like that because basically i i started thinking well i've got a million samples of this drum kit and a million of that one and da 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 da, da. why why do i need hardware to do this you know it was around the time early 2000s i think and and it was like okay why do i why do i need to do that so um, I never really ran with a drum machine for a long, long time in my studio setup until things like DFAM and Pulsar came out, which are just different ways of approaching uh, drum synthesis, I suppose, in, in yeah, a way that... Yeah, they're more I, synthesizers, just, are they? That's the thing. The drum synthesis yeah, is the interesting I guess so. part, I think. But at the same time, you, that kick drum on the Pulsar 20... 23 you, um you can you can really get 808 and 909 well not maybe not so much 909 but definitely 808 thick boomy stuff going on especially if you combine it with the, the the synth voice in the second channel as well i found um but i, I don't know i uh, yeah i'm just i'm just still not sold on really having dedicated 909 or an 808 um you know, even with the cheaper Behringer stuff that's come out now as well, having those things sat around, how much I'd actually use them. Maybe we should have a hands up in the uh, Zoom chat room. How many of you own a actual drum machine? Mm, good question. One, two, no. One, two. That's, that's, yeah, it's uh, about half and half. Six, well, six out of eight, I think. That was probably more. Okay. That's a trip, but I, mean, I, I agree. I mean, I find drum machines. I don't like the pattern way of working until I got yeah. onto the, uh, the the MC seven hundred seven. I found really much more inspiring for as a drum machine because yeah. it's just easier to use. What mm. I what I what I tend to find when when someone sits down with a drum machine is that they they start with the drum machine sometimes and they fill everything with every single sound you've got going on there. And before you know it, there's nowhere to put any bass lines and chords. It's just it's just percussion da, 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 da. look how many things i can do on my drum machine and really i mean i'm okay i make a lot of techno for me it's a big kick drum which is usually a combination of different kick drums that i've layered up or designed uh, and a and a hi-hat and big reverbs and that's that's it really <laughs> so yeah. you know well uh, yeah every 80s remix uh breakdown yeah. section forever yeah, there. yeah. <laughs> oh, it's like the, uh, it's like the it's like the dreaded person who brings the who brings well they used to be bring the djembe and then start bringing the um <laughs> the, the the cajon to the parties <laughs> and fill the whole time they fill the yeah. whole time you know yeah or like play a djembe because that was the thing they used to play little bongos that you know couldn't be heard and they'd come out and play djembe that would be somewhere in between e flat and <laughs> so boom 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 and then just to make this constant sort of atonal drone um yeah, the equivalent of that it. in drum i know what you're saying <laughs> well actually that wouldn't work for you so you know if you if somebody turned up on brighton beach uh matt with a djembe against your volkers you'd be toast i think I don't know about that, mate. I don't know. Actually, I, 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 um, I also purchased something called a hang drum this week as well, which is on its way to me, which are beautiful uh, instruments. If you haven't seen them, it's a pan drum as well. Um, they, they're handmade sort of steel drums tuned to a particular key, and uh, they're really good for busking and for meditation and, and that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, I think... Hang drum, 
have you seen the hang drum um, capo? You put the big capo around the hang drum and you squeeze, <laughs> squeeze it, <laughs> and then go. I <laughs> think. <laughs> yeah. No, I really? don't think I have gas. I think that's an actual lie. I'm, I'm very gullible. It's an actual lie. <laughs> <laughs> nice try, nice try. Um, just what last thing on on uh, out, outboard hardware like drum machines. I think there is something to be said though for the way that a drum hit can sound when you are taking it from external hardware and you're hitting a preamp and you're hitting a sound card with it and recording that in. I think that the, there is a sonic quality still that you capture there than when if you're just triggering samples inside the box i still i still feel that i don't know why some of my kick drums if i'm just if i'm just triggering them from inside the box i have to work with them a little bit more to get them uh, to the sort of aggressive point uh, or the transient to a particular place i have to work with it a little bit more i don't know may, maybe it's um psychosomatic but i've always thought like when i hear like even off an s950 a kick drum coming off that he's got this particular thwack when it's when you're it's recording really, it in really and poor I, dc uh dc <laughs> zero crossing algorithm or something mm -hmm. yeah, yeah <laughs> probably yeah uh wagyu in the chat room um um i think he's still going positive. yeah we, we haven't seen the volker cowbell yet that's probably uh, that's probably going to be next april fools i'm sure there mm -hmm. was a volker cowbell <laughs> april fools a couple of years ago actually i'm fairly <laughs> sure but uh, maybe it never made it to market. I can't imagine why. The, Vo the Volca kick is one of the is is the is the peculiar one in the Volca range, though, for it being so specific. I mean, you can do bass lines and some stuff in it, but it, that does do an amazing kick. You, you know, uh, does it? Also, I might have to look at yeah, that. It, oh, well, it's, it's a, cool. It's a, it is very cool. It's, it's an MS style high pass filter. Isn't yeah, it? I mean, and a yeah, right, so you much. just get. Uh, in yeah. fact, Hayes Anderson in the, the Twitch chat, which I, I'm sorry I can't uh, feature, I haven't figured that out. It says they keep, uh, they keep the Volker kick, Hayes Anderson keeps the Volker kick around to make sure you can get that bass if you need it. So yeah, nice. yeah, yeah. Might be, might yeah. be the answer. Yeah. Might be. And the kick Lancet's another good one, isn't it, from uh, Vermona? For sounds just like a, a medical. <laughs> sounds like something medical. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The um, um, MS-20, of course, is, is great as well for kick drums. Um, and particularly sometimes if I'm doing a track where I want that kind of kick drum, you don't know if it's a kick drum or if it's the bass line, you know, like you could do with really long 808s and you can tune them and pitch them. Well, of course, you essentially you've got that within the synth voice within the MS-20, um, going from just opening and closing envelope times and that kind of thing, which I really yeah. like doing a lot. Yeah, mm. uh, well, I totally understand. Is that a, is that a, a, a min, an MS-20 Mini? It is, but to me, it's 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 the big one because I've never owned the big one, so I know no difference. And I, I'm yeah, my my hands are pretty big, but that, that's fine for me. But it is me. the my mini. Hands yeah. are tiny. What? Which one is? Uh, which filter do you uh, do you favour on the uh, on the MS20 mini? Just out of curiosity. You mean in terms of the high pass or low pass? Well, either that or there's a type you could you switch, can't you, between the type one and the type two? I think on the mini, can't you? Are you I think it's a boot sequence. Oh. Because it basically oh. they've got there's there's two oh. filter circuits they in, in yeah. uh, they and they made the uh, type one and the type two it's like pre nineteen seventy six I can't remember okay. the exact and what you boot it on in a certain way and you get one or the other I think I uh, this is this is <laughs> wicked there you awesome go. you can have that for nothing or it's Thanks, a complete Nick. lie and uh, you'll spend the rest <laughs> of the day trying to figure out why and it's not working that's you know, an yeah, lie. you've just either April have you April Fool's Day I'm just better than your down. lie Gaz that's almost believable I think yeah <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to be sat here holding down random buttons as I turn it on going why aren't it sounding any different I, I, like honestly look it up I'm pretty sure that it, it, it right. might have been you had to hold on and, and hold a key down I just really okay, cool. dim, dim distant recollection of that and, and uh, I made nice one Nick I knew I'd came on the show for a reason now 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 is to learn these things so thanks there you go well so, or not yeah or just be completely oh, in the yeah. chat room ms filter not selectable on the mini ah so okay there you go only tabletop version instantly uh, corrected there are you sure about that <laughs> because on the tabletop version there was an actual switch but on the mini it's uh, there isn't a switch for it it's a it's a function it's a reboot function it's a it's ooh. a booting thing i'm pretty sure I, I, mm. Well, I, okay. I mean, I wouldn't testify in court, and I'm certainly not going to bet on it. But anybody in I'll anybody in our, our local audience know this for sure? Anybody own the Z No, it's <laughs> just a load of shrugging. <laughs> None of that. So, in fact, yeah. So, I'm afraid not. Oh well. Uh, but thank you. Ah, oh, hold on. That's is that a Volker kick you've got there? 
Oh no, that's a that's a uh, that's a craft synth, oh. a craft drum, isn't it? Yeah, I've that, got is that Waggy's a craft got... rhythm? Because I I've got one here craft and I need to build it. And um, I've heard these things and they sound absolutely amazing. I might do I might do a live stream of me building this and then playing around with it actually. So if you're gonna if you're gonna film it, uh, make sure you blue tack it down to the surface because it moves around a lot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> completely. It's ready oh, to wow, go. Look. That's, you, I think you should put the cellophane back on that, and you could keep it and sell it when you're in your dotage for, I don't know, at least twice what you paid for it. Do you reckon <laughs> I could sign it and everything? <laughs> maybe, maybe we should sign it as a Sonic State giveaway one day or something, as we do wow. do a prize or something. I know some people have, uh, at uh, Modal. Maybe they've got. I don't know if they've got any spare stock, but I might be able to dig out some. You know, it might be some special editions or something. I, I, again, cool. I'm complete conjecture. Uh, we should probably do our competition because now you can have the chance to win a full copy of Stutter Edit Two. So let's have that now. From the mind of composer and electronic music pioneer, BT, in collaboration with Isotope, Stutter Edit 2 brings movement to your mix, faster and with more versatility than ever before. Stutter Edit 2 lets you slice audio into razor-sharp rhythms and moving effects, creating exciting new rhythmic worlds within your music. Instantly recreate the famous stutter effect in your samples, sound design, and beyond, all with a single button. Control a vast array of studio quality effects, all linked to the timing of your stutter edit, making it easy to add filter sweeps, panning effects, pumping dynamics, and more. Stutter Edit 2 is the fastest and most exciting way to dynamically elevate your music productions, sound design, film scoring, and more. Head to isotope.com to download a free 10-day trial. And check out our other Creative Suite products too. Yeah, I want to say thank you to uh, Isotope for providing the prize. In fact, we have another competition for this week, the uh, the uh, Stutter Edit competition. I'm looking for the hashtag slice, slice, slice dash dice. I, uh, I, I So rather than put those two words together, I put a dash between them. Slice dash dice or slice hyphen dice. <laughs> God, that's hard to say. I don't want to say that anymore. Uh, so I want a slice. I've got to say it now, haven't I? Slice hyphen dice and stutter edit to hashtags to at Sonic State and at Isotope Inc. If you tweet those, uh, then we will be able to pick you up from the competition. That's a Twitter competition. And once again, the hashtag slice dash dice and the hashtag stutter edit two to at Sonic State and at Isotope Inc. And, <clears throat> excuse me, we thank uh, them for providing that for a prize. And we got a competition winner from last week. Uh, and, um, <clears throat> the winner for last week, that's not him. Uh, this is him. Uh, is da -ca da I don't know how you pronounce that. Hey, Hikari Music, <laughs> uh, da da Cave, uh, with a, a very amusing uh, frantic cat. I don't know what the cat's doing there. Typing. Maybe ordering cat food on uh, Amazon. I'm not sure. One of those things, but a great no, gift. Playing, playing the keyboard mode in Ableton Live. Ah, okay. No, he's doing a bit of drum Max and bass. Max MSP coding. <laughs> Max MSP coding. Yes, a genius cat <laughs> with a with a t with a t-shirt on. Anyway, uh, if you want to get in touch uh, at Hikari Music uh, on Twitter, we can provide you with a prize of Stutter Edit Two, thank courtesy of Isotope. And I want to say thank you once again. Another great bit of. Uh, uh, some people are people are, are donating. It's fantastic. We've got super stickers. I actually enabled super chat this week. I'm not quite sure why. I think I just thought I'd try it out, but don't feel you have to. But, but much appreciated uh, as we uh, every little helps, as we all say. Um, <clears throat> excuse me very much. Um, so what else did we get? Um, chip a chip. Big changes at Native Instruments. Uh, this oh. is. Uh, Another great article from Peter Kern, who's very good at the kind of inside industry stuff. Also based in Berlin, which makes it easier. Uh, there's news that uh, uh, Matt Gallick and or Marta Gallick and Daniel Haver, uh, who were the sort of head honchos, have been moved to the sort of advisory board. That sort of seems to be a way that things happen. You know, you kind of have people in charge for a really long time, and then you just move over to the uh, the advisory board, and they bring in some new blood. And they've got a chap called Con Kanicki, who uh, I know quite well. I don't know well, but I used to deal with him because he's the uh, new CEO. He used to be the press guy. And, um, you know, there's been a, 
there's been a lot of stuff going on with Native Instruments. I mean, 2017, they got 50 million euro investment from a, a company called EMH, whose mantra is uh, growth through digitalization. Uh, they bought sounds.com, but then there's been massive uh, redundancy cuts. There's been, you know, there's been a lot of upheaval and there was some sort of issues with the HR department and smacks of racism and, you know, all this kind of unpleasantness. And now, you know, obviously they've got to move ahead. I mean, because Native Instruments, for the longest time, I mean, Contact Player, they're the only game in town, mm. but now we're starting to see a bit of uh, other companies, you know, like Spitfire and whatnot, are coming up with some, okay, we're doing our own thing, they've got their own players. So they're, they're starting to have to perhaps uh, evaluate their, their situation and kind of get their skates on and, and stay where they are. I'm, I'm, I'll be up front. I mean, I think Native Instruments stuff, um, certainly the, the, the sounds that they produce for uh, um, Contact and for Battery, they are amongst the best ever you know that they sound so production ready they're really really good quality stuff software instruments are really yeah. fast it's just not a world i use a lot because I, I'm, I'm more hands-on i don't know about you i mean you must have to teach a bunch of this stuff i mean obviously being involved in uh, bim in brighton as a, yeah. as a course director that you know you must you you know are you totally. do they feature a lot in the technology that you have to bring into the college for people to to learn so <laughs> controllers and whatnot Absolutely. I mean, it's it's the go-to piece of software when we're, when we're delivering anything to do with working to move an image, you know, um, contact being the main thing there in terms of going to your multi, multi instruments. Um, um, I use it a lot when I'm writing for TV and adverts. It's the go-to. You see, um, you see Christian using it, Spitfire, audio, you know, it, there's so many, so many software developers out there producing amazing um, multi multi instruments and it's all it's all living inside of contact so they've really got that or so reactor up. as well you know yeah, yeah i mean uh, th th i was about to say reactor um reactor blocks as well in terms of teaching synthesis and things like that that's what we do i do a lot of that as well at bim um so yeah we native instruments it's 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 installed on every single computer that we have around all of our campuses. And we've got, got five in the UK now, five BIMs in the UK, one in Hamburg and one in Berlin as well. And um, they're, they're go-to pieces of software, definitely. In terms of the sound though, I mean, I I was using Reactor, what did it used to be called in like uh, 1997? It was called something completely um, different. What was it? It was like a Surge Core or something like that. I can't remember. Um, Chat but it, 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 I remember having it. I was able to run one instance of it on my really bad <laughs> PC, and I was like, and I thought, wow, this sonically, um, you know, like the waveforms, square square waves, sawtooths, and and the triangle waves. I was just like, oh, this sounds really, really juicy, and um, I, I I knew that this was a, a piece of software that was very different to all the other VSTs that I had installed at the time. And it's continued to grow like that. And Reactor Blocks is, it sounds absolutely fantastic. I've always been a big fan of Absinthe. Um, oh God, and, that was so and, deep, wasn't it? I just couldn't. Oh remember. man. Yeah. I mean, I never knew what I was doing with it and I, I, I used it so envelopes. much. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Just what I the just, world I, I mean, yeah, it's 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 so it can go so deep. But the more I used it, the more I just got into it. And now, now I just it's a joy to use actually. Um, but I'm really interested to see where we're going in terms of native instruments. Uh, big shake shakeups in company can 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 you know they can bring companies down or they can build them back up. Yeah. Um, it depends. I'd, I'd like to know what their there. vision is. Yeah. Um, one thing I would say is that you know that there's still that company you think of when you when you come to reinstall your computer and you're like, oh, I've got to reinstall like 450 million gigs of mm -hmm. native instrument software now. And so I'm wondering if they're going to work towards um, how that how they could do that. You know, imagine imagine all of the native instrument stuff being inside this kind of synth interface and you just load up absinthe and then you, you've got a touch screen or something like that instead of installing stuff all the yeah, time or well, being cloud-based hard, hardware is kind of what got them into trouble in the first place wasn't it they kind of had a bunch of audio mm. interfaces that didn't do as well I, i've got to make a That's correction true. got to make a correction well firstly the chat room said it was generator was what was the original uh, generator thank you but secondly uh the competition is bogus because you can't have hyphens in hashtags so we're going to go for 
slice dice <laughs> one word for the competition or any combination of those whatever shows up with the with slice and dice in it i will take as an entry mm. i do apologize for that awful <laughs> cock up uh, yeah guys yeah. this is i mean mm. name instruments i mean i they are got to be one of the, uh, uh, next to steinberg they've probably got to be one of the longest serving software houses have they not I would imagine so. And I mean, it's the way that they've adapted and been very much at the forefront of things. Uh, there's always been a really impressive thing with them. And, you know, they brought out their own thing, the NKS way of mapping yeah. stuff, you know, and this, this has always been this huge thing, hasn't it, in the kind of controller world, the whole kind of um, mapping idiom. Uh, so I was kind of curious, this is the thing I'm quite curious about, and I don't know if you know this or if anyone could help me with this, but NKS format, uh, like, so that means if you've got devices like a machine or, um, or any of their... Uh, uh, S line or what's it, the M32s or all those kind of keyboards. Uh, it means everything's kind of pre mapped uh, in this NKS. Yeah, I think format. I think if it's a third party plugin and it's NKS yeah. format, you 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 could provide the description or metadata that enables the NKS That's hardware right. to be able to talk to your third party plugin or indeed uh, right. You know, the, yeah. So you know, and so so like Arturia, for instance, they make their plugins in NKS. Uh, you know, they make them NKS compatible. Uh, and isotope, ozone, yeah. you can sort of map that. So, you know, so that, so, right, so we know that. What I want to know is, though, can other, man, can other hardware manufacturers make NKS compatible hardware? Mm, that's it seems question. like they want, seems like if they're having everyone, like, doing it to them, you know, that would, well, I think it would be, be good for them to open that up if they don't. Mm, maybe yeah. so. I don't. I don't know whether our uh, our Zoom audience, our uh, native instruments users. I suspect. I mean, it's the sort of thing that you tend to have. You know, you buy the libraries. You might have contact libraries. Some are, some aren't. I mean, I think it probably depends on what you're doing. Uh, I know. You know, like if we talk to Ty, he's probably got every single one. What would make sense to me is if they've managed to get all of these people to get on board with the uh, NKS format. The problem I have is all of their stuff has got is, is a sort of eight, eight encoder type paradigm. So what they need is a really tasty NKS controller that yeah. maybe has a decent touchscreen, yeah. has, yeah. has some kind of like a, 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 a better graphic element to it, you know, some uh, buttons and knobs and, you know, more stuff that is just like, wow, that will do almost everything I need it to do. You know, maybe that's the answer. They, that's well, where they, the they... hardware would make sense. They tried that, didn't they, with the complete control to an extent, yeah. um, Did, uh, where they, where on their controller and they had color, they had color coded things going on, and and I think there was a display on it that updated. Um, oh, so that, I think there was. The, 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 sorry, Gaz. But yeah, but they just don't have faders, do they? It's all kind of knob. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So. I think it was a half, maybe a halfway house for some, them to try something out in this way. And, um, he, yeah, I don't know. I mean, does I wonder if even Peter Kern knows where Native Instruments are going next and what what's their roadmap? Well, are you really the interesting yeah, to see. That's the problem I've got because this, you know, yeah, the screen there. is lovely, but that's only eight things, and you need yeah. well, you need uh, is it two, four, six? Eight, yeah, you need nine, I'd say, and that that, that also they had this kind of this uh, sort of jog shuttle scroll well I can't remember what they called it that was custom designed that we're very proud about I'm sure it's great but more than eight controls and they have to be n not only knobs and there needs to be I think there needs to be um, uh, ring ring LEDs around anything like that because otherwise uh, you know it's it's I, yeah you were talking about core actually weren't you Matt that's what you were thinking about that the core thing rather Maybe. than complete control uh, probably yeah. 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 yeah 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 so yeah so that thing I had the core too and it was really really poor as it was yeah oh, it was a really nice idea but it was really poor uh I, you know it was oh like that red display was just really peculiar <laughs> to sort of get the viewing angle right or maybe i had a core yeah. i think i had a core one actually and i think that was even worse on the screen um and that had like basic audio interface oh, i can't remember one of them had an audio interface the other one didn't. oh there it is uh, yeah yeah i mean it's not as if mm. that's any different to uh, early electron uh displays is it really that is the machine that is the initial yeah. what was that a machine drum was red on red i seem to remember but yeah anyway 
But this was a I'll product, though, that wasn't... It was killed off, wasn't it, and didn't get long-term support. So um, yeah. I know I know that it was a quite a damaging thing. And I think that, like, you know, the complete control approach has been clearly, like, influenced by the failure of the core platform, I think. Well, yeah, it was. A, that, I mean, like I say, I think that was one of the reasons that they required funding, because it, you invest a lot of stuff in making hardware, particularly back then. And I mean, now maybe they're ready to do it again, because they, like they say, they've got the NKS standard that they can tie their hardware mm -hmm. to. So it would make sense to maybe utilise that. I don't know. Uh, um, I was just going to say, one, one software manufacturer that has been slowly pulling me in is Arturia. They have just been brilliant with their the three compressors that you will need, the three filters that you will need, um, the three delays, the three reverbs, those, and then you can buy them in as a bundle. And when these things come out, you can demo them. And I'm, uh, you've got like the MS-20 filter in there, Oberheim filter in there. You've got the RE-20 as a delay. You've got digital delays in there. It does reverse stuff. And I've just been slowly realizing that I'm just slowly buying their software. And it's, <laughs> well, they had a big summer really sale, didn't all. they? You could have saved it all and, and yeah. waited for the, for the big, the big, uh, the, the, uh, the big pandemic sale that they've been doing. Actually, the Key Lab, yeah. uh, the Key Lab Mark II, they're really good. They they integrate really nicely as well. So, Gaz, you were to come in. Well, I was going to say that with those pieces of software that, that Matt's talking about, the the graphic interfaces are really fun. I think that's where they've done really good work in recent years you know those like delays for instance they're beautiful graphics and beautiful like the way the little bottom bit opens when you expand it's just a really pleasant it, it, it really f does bring to mind playing with physical effects i think uh as a software thing um yeah just something i, I always think that yeah graph and graphically if they've gone up yeah, and if you get if you jump back to Native Instruments and you look at something like um, one of their latest pieces of software, which was called Rounds, I don't know if you've seen that interface, and you've got these circles, yeah. and <laughs> I mean, I'm still trying to figure that abstract. one out, and yeah. you know, I, yeah. and I'm I'm a Max I'm a Max user, and I've got my head around Absinthe, but Rounds for me, I'm still not quite sure what that's doing in terms of just because of its interface. It's so important. It's interesting. Yeah. Well, I think the other thing about the end, the the uh, the, the complete control stuff, it just felt a bit overpriced because you were this juicy thing, but it didn't have any MIDI ports on it or not enough MIDI ports, you know, so you can't, you can't just turn it on and plug it into a MIDI module. You have to go via the computer. You have to, you yeah. know, there, it, there, or, you know, you could store one custom setup in it and it would remember it if you left switched it on. I mean, I just don't think that's good enough these days, to be honest. I mean, they're beautiful right. things, but they need to be more... A uh, DM32 well, for around nine, £99, though, it comes with an amazing software bundle and it's sort of, I think, yeah, value maybe, for money is I don't know. outstanding. Do, do, well, let's take it over to our, do our, uh, our... Let's have a show of hands. Have you found your perfect hardware controller, if that's your thing? You know, if you're using... Is there such a thing? I don't think there... No, there we go. I think that's pretty universally... <laughs> that's a universal truism uh, that there's no such <laughs> thing as the perfect controller. I mean, you can design your workflow... Uh, maybe around your controller but what happens then is you know we end up in that situation where you spend hardware controllers are great for live stuff where you have a very fixed specific thing and you go on this song i want it to do this and you, you spend all that time programming it but actually in the creative environment it's a very you don't want to be getting it land and assigning and all this stuff it has to be as simple as possible and that's yeah. the issue you know that there's this and you know i suppose that's one of the things that midi 2.0 is supposed to be kind of bringing out it just sort of says here's what i've got what do you want and if somebody could create an interface that just so sort of went i want that that, that 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 and then you're done and it remembers it for next time or however you want it to be stored then you could be in a you know that's a much quicker and much more immediate and a creative situation if you've got to get in and start typing names and clicking and assigning it's just yeah the, the moment's gone basically and you can't mm. really you're never going to get it back so you know that that's still got yet to be found i would say Although the uh, one of the topics we were going to have on this show, I don't know if we've still got time, but there was uh, there was a particular hardware controller we was going to oh, look at. Oh yes, oh let's do that now. I mean, because that ties segue in well. onto that. That let, let's do that. I think that's uh, <laughs> yeah. Cause hey guys, my name is Chid Wee, and welcome to Dollars Jamming. In this video, we're going to be checking out the Arturia Keystep Pro, which is the predecessor to the Keystep, which was a sequencer that was the, one of the first sequencers, like popular sequencers, to feature CV and gate to sequence your rack. 
this is a whole different beast, a whole different monster, full of outs. It's made to be your main sequencer or like the brain of your setup. So that was Jade Wee there, uh, who's done a couple of great videos on the Keystep Pro. I've got a Keystep Pro here, and I haven't done a review of it yet. I'm still trying to figure out how to how I would approach that, and I'm very late to the party. But as we know, with the uh, the Keystep and the B Step Pro, they became ubiquitous. You know, they were if you wanted something, you know, the Keystep uh, the B Step Pro would be basically in most studios just as a CV gate interface and MIDI interface in many cases. You just see it stood up with a load of cables coming out of it, not necessarily being used. And the Keystep uh, has been you. You know, that is the machine for uh, certainly when trade shows were a thing. If somebody's demoing some modular stuff, you probably have a key step in front of it because you could do the keys, the, the CV or the gate stuff or the MIDI stuff, depending on how you edit. And it seems like the key step pro is really, or is it, is it going to become the controller to have? I mean, I know, Matt, if I come to you, because you're, you're not so much of a keyboard kind of person, although I can actually see three keyboards in your shot at the moment. S one, yeah, two, three. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, I, and I have the, I've got the Beat Step here, the Beat Step Pro, yeah, which so I hidden use. Yeah, away, which is using an interface, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. As you were saying, it's actually behind the Pulsar, which I use for, for step sequencing. The Pulsar, actually, because the Pulsar, you, it converts um, um, the, the, the CV outputs into these alligator clips. And the beat steps just clocked over MIDI to Bitwig or Ableton, whatever I'm using. And I'm, I'm just using it really as a step sequencer. Um, and it's just so simple and, and easy to use to, to, to play around with stuff and get things working in weird timings and that kind of thing. I would really like to check out, though, this um, key step the, pro. The, big, the big one. Yeah, this, this Key Step Pro looks great to me, even though I go on and crack on about, I don't like the, the black and white keyboards. The fact that it's got this kind of, the beat step functionality in there with it, I think I could probably have a lot of fun with this because I would probably approach it in using it in a way rather than, uh, I would like to basically <clears throat> blur the kind of playability aspect and the sequencing aspect and combine those things together. And I don't know if that's possible. So. Um, you, you know, playing chords but using a sequencer to challenge when notes particularly go out from chords uh, and use different timings for that. I'm probably not explaining this very well. It makes a lot of sense to my head, but th this is how I usually approach sequencing and things. Just to get vibes and different styles going on is, is to kind of try and misuse it. And mm. um, when you've got something like this, which has got step sequencing, it's got chords in it and it's got it's got different banks to doing it running one out into another one and affecting that to get these strange chains of events going on which is something like again we was going to talk about this as well which is the the new product as well from soma which i won't go into now but um that seems to do that kind of thing as well yeah, it's interesting. I mean, there are so many ways that you can use these things. I mean, one way I was thinking mm -hmm. of with just using the drum sequencer, almost like it's a clocking device. So you just each yeah. each of the eight tracks, you just have, you know, you've got quarter notes, you've got sixteenths, you've got thirty twos, yeah. you've got and you just run them that so it's it's basically a clock device. Yeah. And you just send it to yeah. whatever it was and it clocks everything to the master clock in in however many steps there are in the sequence and that that's sort of, you know there's so many ways and, and the thing that i like about it when we were using it for the mc707 review i just had it in front and i would just select whichever track i wanted to play whatever track i wanted on the on you know it's like a, a multi timbre keyboard controller if it had splits as well it would be awesome you know but yeah it is it it's it's all about usability uh, for a lot of these so, things can you answer this question or someone who has one um with the key step, you could change pattern without having to save what you did, and you could just immediately write into a new pattern. So there was like a kind of buffer memory. Uh, with the Beat Step Pro, if you change patterns inadvertently and haven't saved, you would lose. Yeah, you know, I think it's the pattern. same thing. I think, but I would it, have to check. You lose. That. It doesn't. You see, and that's you know, uh, like I love that idea of a buffer memory unless you have decided to save there. So it will automatically have just saved, mm. uh, but when, maybe when you turn yeah, it I'm off, not, I'm not it, it sure. wipes it. I'm not sure, actually, about okay. that. I'd have to Which way round have they gone? Yeah. yeah I, I'm not, I'm not For, sure. Because you were mentioned about workflow, you see. I think that thing about... Um, 
you know, you just move on without having to go, have I saved it? You just, you know, things like that. Yes. Can pop you out and then you've lost your work or whatever, you know, and like, like electron stuff is really clever in the way that you can work with this buffer memory, save, go, you know, revert back, you know, totally change the pattern, change everything and then just sort of jump it back to its saved state. Uh, but it also has like a kind of pre saved state, like a buffer sort of stage mm. as well. Uh, now, all of that stuff is really cool once you've got it in your head that it does that, you know, and that's, well, that's just it like... Depends, yeah, I suppose it depends which way you cerebral. work, 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 which way right. you work, yeah, that's true. So, so what I'm saying is, I'm, I, for me, for a workflow, I'd want it always just to buffer memory everything, you know, so I can just move on and go back to that thing and it's still there and, and that be across all tracks. And then, then you know, you if I like it... At it the end, but you save it. You can yeah, save yeah. it. If, I'm if not you, sure. Yeah. I, it might be. I can't remember if it... I, I don't know if it does that, but that's a, that's a fair okay. point. Is there a software fair. that goes with this one, Nick, as well? Is no, that, just, the just the control centre. Just the control centre. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, and yeah. it'll give you all of the stuff. Actually, I mean, I didn't realise it was quite so late, but we really should uh, look at the SOMA thing while we're at it, because mm. I, mean, I know we could yeah, talk cool. the article. But it's a great... Uh, the, there, there are so many ways to use these things, and, and the Keystep Pro is even more of them. So anyway, let's just get on to this. This is the uh, new Ornament 8. Ornament 8. Uh, it's not from Vlad, but actually it's from... Uh, Ornament 8 is a fully analog organismic sequencer and synthesizer of behavior created for interacting with Lyra 8, Pulsar 23, UVREX systems and any other equipment that can receive CV signals, including non-audio ones. Ornament is the first sequencer in history that based on a horizontal hierarchy of modules. It doesn't have a master clock that set the tempo. The ornament consists of eight equal and independent cells, which are controlled dual lines. Triggers, gates and CV signals are the result of their interaction. Right. It's worth watching that because there are so many brilliant quotes in it. It says, yeah. one, of, one of my favourite is, the present in the ornament creates its future but there, and then there are just tons of these these sort of like throw away but like really deep lines so essentially what this is at its basic level is eight sequences that are just sing, single pulse loopers that can interact with each other and uh, that's a delay line so you you turn up the delay for the length of the loop but it's only got one output but they'll interact and it, it, i mean the electrons, the uh, the Soma stuff is bonkers. I mean, I love the Pulsar 23, I love the Lyra 8, and this can interface with the Lyra 8 if you put a little special thing over it. It's absolutely uh, bonkers. Is it too bonkers, do you think? I I'm going to ask you first, Matt, because you just got the Pulsar. Yeah, you've just got, like, a grin over your well, yeah, yeah. Have uh, you look, ordered this? <laughs> let me put this out there. I think Soma are probably one of the most important companies out there at the moment making Ooh. musical. Uh, yeah, I'm going to say that. I wow. think that these mm. guys are pushing stuff forward. And some people may say, well, it's actually going back to old principles of using electronic equipment and hardware. I'm sorry, but the, the fact that these people are alive and making this equipment makes me very, very happy to be in this world right now because that every time a product of theirs comes out, I'm challenged in a completely new way in, in a way that I'm working with music production. The Soma has been absolutely mind-bendingly fun, intuitive, exciting, dynamic, it, and it just sounds amazing. Now, you're adding this to the mix. Where are this company going? This, you know, we was talking about where's Native Instruments Roadmap going. Soma, for me... I can see down the line, I'm just going to have a Soma studio. I'm just going to get rid of everything, and I'm just going to have a Lyra. I'm going to have the Pulsar. I'm going to have this sequence. Imagine a Soma think, mixing desk. Yeah. I, well, I think they're making I, – I, I, I hear that they might be making just an effects – unit as well taking the effects that they've got and and creating something like that i could be wrong so i think they've they've got you, i didn't know you get that already they, the lyra 8 
the later eight effects. Isn't that already out? Yeah, there's a Eurorack a thing. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, there's there a Eurorack of it, yeah. Um, did I also hear that they've bought a, <laughs> an island or something island. or a place <laughs> where they are going to take music producers over as a bit of an R&D place to play with new products and sort of spend time with the company. That sounds horrible. Nobody wants to be able to do that. I, I can't imagine anybody <laughs> would want to go there. In Zanzibar, I think. Oh, my Lord. I'll go. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Take me. Um, yeah, this, this, the, this, so also, I think, Nick, what, what I got from this uh, Ornament 8 is, uh, you know, you start changing one thing and it, that then interacts with all the other things going on as well. So just by turning one dial, you can increase and change the speed of things and, and how things are kicking things out. Um, it, it basically, what, what I think, it, this is how I understand it. It creates yeah. a relationship between all of the eight parts that, establishes a sort of a fixed state but but through it's like an analog computer essentially this is how it's been likened to yeah. you turn a knob the state kind of goes oh my goodness and then finds it's another fixed state and so okay. it's uh, it's kind of it, it is very chaotic it's vadim Beautiful. minkin it's not vlad kaima this time although i'm sure vlad's uh, uh, had a lot of input into this, but this is from the chap called uh, vadim minkin I believe. And this, this, this is going to be, sorry, to, last thing I'll say on this, I'm aware of the time. Um, the, the one thing I'd say on this and using things like the Pulsar for me is I just have things in record all the time when I'm using the Pulsar. And for this, I'll probably do the same because I think you're going to have some real moments where you're going to be getting things out of it that you just love and you're like, yeah, I've got that. There's not going to be much going back. Like um, Gaz was saying about, you know, having a buffer. There's, I don't, really think there is a buffery unless you've got really good um memory and oh that crocodile cable was here and that da 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 da, da because I, mean, I i leave the soma patched up quite a bit sometimes because I, i'm i've got a vibe going with it that i really love and i don't want to lose it and i'm taking photos of it as well <laughs> yeah i don't know i just Gaz, you haven't yeah. i mean you, i know you get on really well with vlad uh I, but yeah. have you have you got any soma stuff no, but I am. I'm lusting after the pipe. That's the one I really want. I think that looks of course so brilliant. <laughs> yeah, of course, and it's uh, yeah. I mean, I, yeah. The most. I think it's just brilliant how. Um, well, I know certainly for Vlad and this other guy as well. I guess must be sort of plugged into a similar thing. Uh, he's a real artist. Uh, he does all his dancing and is you know he's like a complete artist who works in very various fields and like the the design ethos is like an extension of his art you know that he is a true artist and uh, it just happens that some of his art that he makes are these boxes or items you know um uh, fa you know fascinating and what a wonderful you know important yeah important company to have um but oh I do. I want the lot. I do want the lot. I really do. There's a, there's a great <laughs> I mean, shot later in that video where basically yeah. there are two Lyra 8s. Uh, also, or is it two Lyra 8s to Pulsar and two of these linked up? And because uh, it all talks yeah. to Pulsar. I mean, that's kind of cool. I think it's interesting. <sighs> the Pulsar 23 want. is probably the most traditional instrument they make because it has MIDI and it has a kind of fixed clock uh, sort of... Uh, concept if you want it you can always make it not fixed if you want as well but you know it's the most sort of uh what's the word i'm looking for uh it's the one that sort of adheres to the most standards the rest of them are just kind of out the window <laughs> completely it's kind of but yeah great is great, it great though to make you have to work you know you, we wouldn't talk about this how like the kind of the tr style of putting things in isn't very inspiring really particularly mm. you know so to kind yeah. of get away, anything that gets you away from that that way of working, you know. Yeah, hmm. but it you kind know of me, feels I mean, like. Sorry, it ahead. kind of feels like going back to the old like um, EMS studios, you know, yeah. when you see pictures of them when they're just racks of oscillators and things and uh, and just things patched together, and that approach to music production is so different mm -hmm. to what we're doing here. And and there's no right or wrong about this, folks. And but there is something about being inspired and like Gaz was just saying, punching stuff in on an 808 and a 909 and sitting with it is, is one thing. Well, I, I, Building, it's interesting. You know, I, it, yeah, I, I could talk I, about I, it all I wonder on. if we're, uh, we're, there's a sort of rise of the Cyrillic synth makers because we've got Dreadbox 
and we've got the uh, mm -hmm. the soma you know is there a, is it a sort of a cultural thing that just kind of creates these 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 instruments that make it kind of more interesting to they're just different enough i don't know i mean i'm complete anybody anybody in the uh, the zoom audience got to any uh, uh soma stuff or had any access to any of the soma or desiring after some yeah but there's a thumbs up there from Wagyu. Yeah, yeah, everybody, everybody wants a Soma. Cool. What is it, Pulsar 23 or Lyra 8 or the Sequencer? So, hands up for Pulsar, Pulsar 23. Okay, interesting. Lyra 8? Ah, interesting. So, yes, I'm interested. Yeah. And uh, I know the pipe. I, I, I'm never that interested in things. Got <laughs> oh, there we go. I do beg your pardon. We had a hand up for the pipe. There we go. Uh, just something about hey. things you sort of dribble into that just makes me feel a bit uncomfortable. But you can... <laughs> You can put you can put line ins line ins to uh, the pipe as well and uh, deal with uh, do effects with it that way. Um, but can we just say a big shout out to um, Look Mum No Computer for, com for completing oh, the, his the thousand, thousand oscillators? Because <laughs> I mean that's a, you know I'm thinking about like kind of swarm synths and stuff, and that's like the ultimate sw wall of swarm that he's made. Um, and I it just was, think it's brilliant. It, it was when he said He's, that they all have the different scaling c cadences that made me think, <laughs> so you can't yeah. basically play it with anything at all apart from one big knob that turns the pitch up and down. I suppose if we could see there. It was interesting because well, when it's all out of yeah. pitch, it just sounds like noise, which it would do because it's yeah. a thousand frequencies all all over the place. It's quite interesting. But, yeah, it's worth... He's, he's saying well, he's, during he's, it... He's, <laughs> carrot, sorry. Carrot. Well, when it, when, one thing he keeps saying when he's doing it is like... Yeah, what the difference between a hundred and a thousand oscillators? I'm not sure I could tell the difference. Yeah, <laughs> Just thinking, kind of, yeah but you know, great, good for you. But yeah, I take your point. Great, a great well, I just thing love to it. achieve. Yeah, great, and he's done it. But now he realizes he needs to work on it to make it musical and to make it more practical. And I thought that was a really good, uh, a good thing that he's reached that you know because <laughs> you know he wasn't just like completely defending all those hours that you put in making it he was kind of realizing now i've done this i've got to figure out what to do with it next um but i love the idea he's looked that they want to make it a museum that it's open to the public and that's you know one of the things in the museum so i think he's definitely someone who is just surprising us all the time and brilliant brilliant yeah, yeah well he's doing good i mean he's taking that. the patreon thing and, and you know the patreon people have paid for him to be able to make that because that's not a cheap thing to make i'd imagine i mean it's absolutely right. enormous absolutely and all vast. the names on the on yeah, the knobs. everybody got it's a name. Yeah, each knob is as name. What a great idea! Great yeah. idea. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think we're probably heading towards. Oops, wrong, wrong button. We're heading towards. The, well, we are at the end. It's it's kind of end time. I want to say thank you very much to everybody for joining us. Especially, I want to say thank you to our uh, our, 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 our elite Zoom audience. <laughs> Round of applause to them for for <laughs> being game to kind of come and try it out. Um, generally speaking, how was the experience? Is it weird or is it kind of work or yeah, okay, excellent. Well, they oh, couldn't really say problems. anything else, could they? When faced <laughs> with the panel at them, but no. But thank you, thank you very much for trying that. We may well kind of develop that and take it a bit further, but it's great to have everybody on board uh, with with that Zoom audience. Uh, we'll, we'll see where it goes. Um, but um, that's it for this week. I want to thank everybody very much. I want to remember um, the. I, I'll reiterate the competition because I did mess it up. I'm looking for the hashtag slice dice no hyphen slice dice which is somehow easier to say uh, and the hashtag stutter edit to to at sonic state and at isotoping if you want to win a copy of speedy and isotope stutter edit 2 we're looking for the hashtag slice dice and the hashtag stutter edit 2 and also don't forget uh you can check out the if you want to check out the matriarch q a some really interesting conversations we had with uh, amos and mark uh bitly slash sonic mqa is a, will get you there or just check the youtube channel because it's one of the more recent videos that we've uh, sent out but i want to say matt thank you very much for joining us and i have nice to one. say i totally approve of your new ethernet cable that's the biggest oh, single you. improvement that has happened uh from you since, um, since being on you should keep it there. yeah yeah forget about the music it's just it's about the internet connection um i'll let virgin broadband know nick and i'm Excellent. sure they'll appreciate your feedback they will. Uh, in fact, um, they were being asked uh, in the chat in, in, in Twitch. They were saying, "Can you do a live stream after the show with your uh, Pulsar 23 and DFAM, please?" Oh, <laughs> I would do. I've got. I've. I've actually got a meeting with a couple of clients now. There we but, go. Um, 
I, I will. I'll definitely do that for you all. In fact, I must actually thank Steve Hillier, uh, who's a regular on Sonic State, because he's lent me the, um, the adapters to allow me to get broadband up to this room. And he lives just across the road from me. So thanks, oh, Steve. Wow, cool. Excellent. Oh, yeah, and nice check one. out Steve's. If you, if you, haven't, if you, I don't know if he's talked about this, but he's had an anniversary of um, of his old band, and he's been uh, doing. Uh, he's also released some piano um, music as well that he's produced, and it's really lovely. And he's also given some insights into um, uh, d how Dubstar was recorded and all that kind of stuff. I've been following it, and uh, it's really lovely actually. He's been. I think uh, if you just go to his website, Steve Stephen Hillier. Stephen Hillier, Stephen Hillier, yeah, Stephen Hillier .net, yeah. There it is. Go yeah. check check Stephen that out. Just to shout out to to him because it's beautifully recorded as well. I'm really impressed with the the piano sound he's got. I'll post that. But anyway, thanks for there. having me on the show. And, You're uh, more than yeah. welcome. It's been Thank really nice. Thank you very much. I'm going to just go post that see, there. And do, and Gaz, so, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what do I want? To, I don't know. Just do see something cool. Just see something cool. Okay. Go on in. Oh, is that your that your 1176 pedal? 1176 in a pedal. And this is the one with the Lundahl transformer. Yes. Finally, after years and years and years, every time I do sessions like way, way back in the 90s, you know, being plugged into an 1176 was always just something that just brought out extra thing, extra, extra glue in my performance. Great. Well, you so, play uh, into it. So you play, play too. Yeah, you play into it. Yeah, you play into it. And I've been, uh, I've been really loving it well, with guitar and with bass. But I think it's a bit strange. It, inside it, you can, you can, if you unscrew it and take the back plate off, there's a little jumper inside and you can make it less sensitive. So you can, so if you want to put like, like line level stuff ah, okay. into it. Uh, Toggle but, switch on mm, you need the mod for that, I think. That sounds like a Yeah, good oh, I'm no, not finding on. it. Oh, oh no, this, this, is, uh, this is an LA-2A in a foot pedal oh, by Hofner. Yeah. And this is the press wow. to, uh, this is the press to compress limited edition um, LA-2A. And like you guys, I, I think there's something about playing into something like an 1176 or an LA-2A. It just brings out things and makes you play in a different way. And this is, this mm. is absolutely beautiful, but I'm going to have to check that out. What's that called, Gaz? Cali 76? A, yeah. Origin, Origin Effects Cali 76. Cool, man. And, right. and this comes in two formats, one with the kind of their, their own iron core transformer or uh, this one, which is the more pricier one, which has got the Lundahl transformer in. And the advantage of the Lundahl transformer is it's a lot cleaner, it's a lot more headroom, and it's a lot more suitable for studio or bass guitar uh, kind of things. Oh. Do you reckon that's the sort of thing that would be useful to review, do you reckon? Or do you think that's too too niche? Could be. I mean, I think maybe showing what it what it does might be interesting if mm. you're playing to it and going, this is audio examples. Yeah, it could well be. Mm. I don't know. What cool. do you think? What do you think, Zoom audience? Is that something they've, they've got to interest? <laughs> this show's gone on way too long. They're thinking, I never signed up for I'd that. Like to, so I've, got, I've got a life I'd to like get to on hear that. <laughs> I'd like to hear that with the yeah. drum machine or something, Gaz. That, yeah. that might be quite yeah. interesting with All the right, drum well, machine. Look, we better sign off because we've been running for ever such a long time. But thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, Matt. Yeah. Thank you, Gaz. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you very much, everybody in the chat room. That's it for this week. That was Sonic Talk episode uh, 631. We'll see you next time. Nice Bye-bye now.